Yellowstone Supervolcano. How do we know so much about Yellowstone's deformation? Let's ask DZ. These are the latest Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. They come out every week, every Monday. This week's column written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Contributions from Mike Poland, geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey. He's a scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And I think uh, we should look at the images. I'm reading it to you. Yellowstone is well known for its ups and downs. The caldera has been shown to rise and fall over time at rates of a few centimeters, one or two inches a year. And periods of uplift alternate with periods of subsidence. Since 2015, the caldera has been sinking at a rate of about two centimeters or an inch a year. But how do we know about the ground deformation? Past issues of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles have discussed some of the measurement techniques that have been used to measure the ups and downs, like leveling and the Global Positioning System GPS, both continuous and semi-permanent and interferometric synthetic aperture radar, INSAR. Today, we'll pay homage to one of the scientists that made these discoveries, Dr. Daniel Jurisin. This is him here. He's um, of the Cascado Volcano Observatory conducting leveling survey at Newbury Volcano, Oregon. 2002 image taken by Mike Poland, scientist and geologist in charge of Yellowstone today. Dan Durzin, or DZ, as he's known to his friends and colleagues, grew up in Illinois and obtained a degree in physics from University of Notre Dame, a fact of which he is intensely proud. During his master's and doctoral degrees at the California Institute of Technology, his emphasis was planetary science, but a field trip to the island of Hawaii exposed him to the study of active volcanoes. The landscape of Kilauea volcano captivated him, and in 1967, he landed a position at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. And while in Hawaii, DZ focused on a variety of topics, including the geology of the caldera, explosive eruption deposits from past Kilauea eruptions, and how magmatic activity beneath the ground causes surface deformation and even gravity change. In 1980, he was part of the response of the reawakening of Mount St. Helens, aiding with measurements uh, measuring deformation of the volcano. He was not there for the May 18 eruption. However, he had to return to Hawaii for the birth of his son. In 1981, DZ's wife Linda and his son Jason moved to Vancouver, Washington, where he joined the staff of the brand new Cascade Volcano Observatory. He spent a great deal of time during the subsequent years working on Mount St. Helens, frequently collecting deformation measurements from within the crater and helping to predict small lava dome eruptions. He also began thinking big, caldera big. In the early 1980s, were not only a time of unrest for Mount St. Helens, but also at Long Valley Caldera in Eastern California. That's a supervolcano, as we know, Long Valley Caldera, where uplift and a series of strong earthquakes had been recorded. DZ began investigating calderas worldwide, and he was especially interested in Yellowstone. A study made in the 1970s by University of Utah Professor Robert Smith, one of the founding members of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, suggested that the caldera had uplifted by only 72 centimeters, or 28 inches, between 1920s and 1970s. We're talking about Yellowstone. DZ wondered if that uplift was continuing, so he did what would any good scientist would do. He went out and measured it. And in 1983, DZ initiated the first of a series of annual leveling surveys to Yellowstone, measuring elevation over the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, um, Central Highland and many large calderas, calderas formed by gradual upwarding of the caldera floor after the caldera collapse as a result of renewed magma intrusion near the Hayden Valley and the vicinity of Yellowstone Lake. In 1983 and 84, surveys confirmed that uplift was continuing and by 1985, the survey revealed no deformation. By 1986, it was clear that the caldera was subsiding. 
The subsidence continued until 1995 when the deformation switched back to uplift. As technology evolved, so did DZ's work. He and his collaborators began to apply GPS and INSAR to better understand the ups and downs of Yellowstone, learning that the two research domes sometimes deform in concert and sometimes opposite one another. The Norris Geyser Basin area also deforms, as where Steamboat Geyser is, often in a way that is totally independent from the caldera. To explain these variations in time and space, DZ suggested any interplay between deep magmatic activity and shallower hydrothermal pressurization and depressurization. This conceptual model is now widely applied to other calderas around the world. Calderas meaning supervolcanoes. All of DZ's work is summarized in a 2012 USGS professional paper titled History of Surface Displacements at the Yellowstone Caldera in Wyoming. In addition to his research on Yellowstone, Mount St. Helens, including 2004-2008 eruption and many other volcanoes, DZ served as a scientist in charge of the Cascades Volcano Observatory during 1994-97. He also literally wrote the book on volcano deformation. Volcano deformation, geodetic monitoring techniques. It was published in 2007 and was the first ever book dedicated to that subject. Throughout his career, DZ has served as a mentor to generations of aspiring volcanologists. Many of the students who volunteer to serve on his Yellowstone leveling crews are now professional scientists and he has always been generous with his time, energy, and wisdom. In his off hours, DZ takes professional quality wildlife photographs. You may have seen some of his photos on brochures and websites related to Yellowstone National Park. While this phase of DZ's career is ending, we know this is not goodbye. He's planning to return as an emeritus scientist to continue his Yellowstone research. Congratulations and thank you, DZ. We look forward to continuing to work together in Yellowstone and to seeing more amazing photos of animals that most of us did not even know exist. And this is, this is the profiles across Yellowstone caldera showing the surface uplift and subsidence from repeated leveling surveys between Lake Butte and Mount Washburn from 1976 to 84. Maximum uplift near La Hardy's rapids was nearly 180 millimeters, 7 inches, at an average rate of 22 millimeters per year, 0.9 inch per year. Uplift stopped during 84 to 85, and from 85 to 98, the caldera floor subsided at about 0.3 to 1.4 inches per year. And that's it right there. It's heaving and breathing, as one of the scientists of Yellowstone once said. It's moving up and down as if it's breathing. So this is the latest Caldera Chronicles on, uh, uh, by USGS. And I'll leave a link below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.